but again, it's like, it, you know, I, I comfort myself with the money, but it's not about the money. Like it's about the, the habits and the, and just the discipline and the rule following. And it's like, I didn't do that today. Like I did great in the morning, amazing time in the morning and then just fell apart today or later in the day. So I'll have to sit on it tonight and really uh, reflect and hopefully do what you guys are doing and just relax. Cause I think I was trying to push it a little too much today. Um, and it worked great in the beginning, like I said, and then it, I fell, I fell apart late day. So. Welcome back to This Week in Steady Trade. I am Bryce Tui, filling in for Matthew Monaco because he's being lazy. Um, but I'm joined by Kyle and Jack. Uh, guys, get us started. Get, get us started on how, what are we talking about today? The usual. We're going to go over the market, which we'll talk about um, some trades that I made that were pretty bad. Uh, we'll go into that later. Um, and yeah, how our months are going. How's everybody doing so far? Yeah, so this month definitely is the slowest of the year. And I would say probably the slowest since September, which was a month that me and Kyle really struggled. So I'm not sure how many months it's been in between, but we've been on a really, really good roll. Um, and things are, you know, slowly quieting down more and more and more and more, it feels like. And everything's getting tougher and harder and choppier. So me personally, um, ever since like, the huge GME repump. After that, I've kind of just been taking things really easy and kind of just working on some other areas of life and trying to, you know, take a little bit of a break from the market. But I still have been showing up for the first hour, you know, checking in midday, seeing how like my swings are going um, and maybe, you know, taking a swing trade into the close, but nothing too serious. I'm trying not to put too much stress on myself um, and just trying to focus on nailing and bailing today's action uh if i was focused i mean and i did nail it it could be it could have been a huge day just based on all the volatility everywhere um with the coinbase ipo that was today where it had a huge parabolic move then unwinded um there was a ton of otc panics with ltnc bbkcf uh enzc and a few more um so it's just, you know, we've seen some, some nice patterns and BBKCF was actually a really, really nice multi-day runner that illustrated the uh, trifecta, number five, uh, number four, number five, and number uh, six of Timi Timothy Sykes's penny stocking framework. So that was nice to see one of those. We haven't seen one of those in a while where it panics, bounces, and then you can short the bounce and it goes lower. So it was nice to see that on a clean multi-day runner. Um, what about you guys? How are you guys doing? Um, I'll, I'll go this, like Jack just said, this has been like definitely the slowest month in a long time. And, uh, kind of same thing with Jack. Like I've just been taking a lot of time away from the market. Like yesterday I traded for 10 minutes the day before I probably traded for five minutes. Like when I, I, I see one or two opportunities I like, and if I, if I like them enough, I'll trade them. Um, I actually took last Friday off completely. Didn't trade. I just really haven't been on my screens much. Um, and that's just, again, the market's been really slow in the small cap and OTC land. So it's, to me, it's like capital or mental preservation, right? Like that to me is kind of, uh, I'm trying to prioritize that right now and not burn myself out during a slow market. Cause I did the same thing in September and it was a really, really rough month where it was just so choppy. And, uh, I'm trying my best to like adapt this time and not sit here for eight hours a day in front of my screen where that's like how I build FOMO. So if I just get away from the market, that's the easiest way to avoid the slow periods for me. Um, but with it being a slow month, I mean, this is like on track to probably be my lowest profiting month of, uh, I don't know, the recent, recent past. So, but that's all right. That's all right. That's what normally happens after a really hot market. So I'm not going to complain. What about you, Kyle? Um, I would agree with that. You know, I think my month, I mean, again, there's, there's two full weeks left. We have two and a half weeks left. Um, but the way it's going, yeah, it looks like the lowest of the year, which is relatively still pretty high, you know, considering the March, February through, or January through March was, was quite, I know all my new biggest months. Um, but yeah, I was, I was trading really well last week. Um, last week I went to Dubai with, with Tim and Huddy. 
um, which was like incredible. It was like so awesome. Um, and, and Huddy didn't trade. He was on vacation the entire week. Uh, I actually traded um, and did pretty well, uh, like way better than I expected. Uh, I think I locked in like 30, 35 grand. Um, you know, just came out of nowhere because I just did not expect that being in Dubai. Um, given some days I didn't even like show up. I showed up for like an hour or some one day I showed up for like five minutes, just checked in. Um, but then this, this week it was looking good. And today was looking good after after what Jack mentioned on BB KCF nailed that one like had a had a 10k profit on it and that's like a huge that was a pretty big trade for me considering we haven't seen a a play like that in probably over a month since probably early march if not february um and then when we get in the charts we can go over my enzc where i just kind of give it all back like i literally like literally the 10 10 000 i made in bbkcf um i got stubborn and then give enzc way too many attempts um and pretty much took a huge loss um you know now down only f- finished the day down 5k which again big picture um is like a spec on the dot right my my if you look at my like profitly chart you won't even see it anymore but like the the money or the red day doesn't really matter it's just how it went about you know and so to have such a good day in the morning and really ruin it in the afternoon um super frustrating like incredibly frustrating again on the, on the again on the month i'm still up 30 plus on the month um, but again, it's like, it, you know, I, I comfort myself with the money, but it's not about the money. Like it's about the, the habits and the, and just the discipline and the rule following. And it's like, I didn't do that today. Like I did great in the morning, amazing time in the morning, and then just fell apart today or l- later in the day. So I'll have to sit on it tonight and really, uh, reflect and hopefully do what you guys are doing and just relax. Cause I think I was trying to push it a little too much today. Um, and it worked great in the beginning, like I said, and then it, I fell, I fell apart late day. So we can, uh, we can go over that now unless you guys have anything else you want to want to mention. I think it's like definitely really important what you just said. Like the, it's not about the money. The money just kind of comforts you. But like, as soon as you start trading for the money, that's when you start making those mistakes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's probably an area where a lot of new traders want to keep pushing it, but the market doesn't care. Yeah, I agree. And I made the point too. I, I'm, um, ENZC reminded me similar, similarly to my MMA, MM, what MMNFF trade, just because it was so reckless and like it wasn't. I wasn't nearly as reckless today as I was that day. Thank God, because I'd never want to be in that position again. Um, but yeah, I, I went through that process of like the downside of almost not caring caring about the money. Like caring about the money is you're gonna hurt you. Uh, I got to the point again today. I kind of went back to my old bad habit there, where it's like I almost didn't care at all. Where like you know, I wasn't even thinking how big of a loss I was going to take. I just kept trying and trying and trying and trying. Um, and that's the downside too. So I have to, there's a good, there's a good medium of caring and not caring, you know? Uh, and I went too far one, one direction today. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. well, do you guys want to get into some charts here? Let's do it. Sweet. Up. Oh man. Damn dude. What a beautiful price action. <laughs> yeah huge dump like that um so so bbkcf was a great trade for me out the open um if you look at the daily chart here i mean we're just really overextended i mean truly overdone nice run up from you know two bucks to nearly four today almost touched four um and this is a this this company is a cryptocurrency exchange um not sure how successful they are how big they are legitimately but they were running up along with a few other stocks into the anticipation of coinbase ipoing today and so usually what happens is like a sell the news event where, where once you, once the IPO is here, it's like, Oh, the hype's over, it's done. And everyone who's bought has already bought. So that's, and then usually they start selling off, which is exactly what BBKCF did. So I shorted out the open, um, really nailed it covered. I think by the time we're in the three thirties here, missed some downside. That's okay. I mean, I panicked much more than I thought. Um, dip bought it a little bit and then flipped it immediately for like 10, 20 cents. Um, reshorted again, or like really nailed this top here at the high three forties and then covered again in the 320. So, I mean, immediately out the open, I was on fire, just bam, bang, like three in a row. Um, nice trifecta there. And unfortunately, late day here, once once Coinbase started trading, um, this started happening. And and I kind of had in the back of my mind that I wanted to join this this picture. Like I really thought about shorting in this bounce, um, but I looked away for like five, 10 minutes. Next thing I know, it's down in the 320. like, oh, I don't want to chase. Um, and then I just keep watching it go lower and lower and lower. So that really, that really probably stirred 
like the pot in the wrong way. I started maybe gaining, getting some FOMO, you know, knowing I should have been shorting and I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. Um, Cause that would have been another great win. Had I even made, you know, I don't even have to cover. It's not a perfect science. Like I wouldn't even probably made it to low here at two forties, but even, even making it down to like the two eighties or one more time to the, the two fifties, like would have really, really felt good that I, you know, followed through on my plan, but I didn't. Um, but then ENZC, I see ENZC panicking. Um, and my immediate response to seeing ENZC, ENZC panic is that it's gonna be a great dip buy only because I've probably dip bought this stock. I mean, two or three dozen times, you know, all throughout this, the last two or three months, um, being what is probably been the best dip buyer or the best bouncer I've traded in almost ever. Like I probably could look at my long profits from, from dip buys and ENZC is probably up there with some of the biggest trades I've had. Um, so seeing a panic, I'm like, yeah, like, let's, let's do it. We'll, we'll do it up again. Um, unfortunately I start dip buying and start selling a lot of fake outs and I start like cutting and you know, trying to cut some losses, not getting filth here, slippage there, trying to rebuy it again, slip more slippage. Um, and then I just double check. I'm like, what, what, why is it panicking? Where's the news? Which is like the first thing you should do. Like the fact that I was doing it mid trade was, was all again, that was a huge mistake. Um, found out that they had a conference call and in the conference call, the CEO said like, we're, we're not, you know, our business isn't going to be running fully till like next year or something like that. That was like the, the kind of the outline of what was said. Um, not word for word. I, I wasn't listening for word for word, but so at that point I'm like, I should have never dip on this. <laughs> like, right. If I just had looked into the news first, I could have completely avoided this. Right. Um, so now I'm in the trade and I pretty much realize like this isn't going to bounce. Um, so I sell, I just have to panic. So I have to get out where everything I have left um, ended up being the low near two or three or sorry, 12 or 11 near the low. Um, and then of course, once I sell, it actually ends up bouncing like a penny to two, two or one to two pennies, one to two cents. Um, now granted it isn't, it was late day. So it wasn't, that also was a good, not an ideal sign. Like I probably shouldn't have been dip buying it anyway. Like in the morning is always when a better time to dip by these. Um, so again, just like the, this, this perfect storm of like, you know, bad things and like not paying attention, like bad news, this, you know, bad fills, being stubborn, keep trying to multiple attempts, um, you know, pretty much took me from my great trade on BBKCF down to red in the day from ENZC. So, you know, like I said, doesn't really matter big picture. Um, money wise, it's almost insignificant to what I've done and what I will plan on continuing to do. Um, but to say that there's an underlying issue here, or at least, at least today, like at least me being lazy and not really being meticulous today, um, needs to be looked at. So that's, that's kind of what I be, will should be continue to analyze for the rest of the day and, and hopefully be prepared for tomorrow or even take off, not take off completely, but just take a chill pill the rest of the week, you know, really reset, make sure I'm good to uh, continue trading well. So. Yeah. And I think it's important that you noted, like, it's not a game changer profit wise. It's just, that's the process that if you kept doing that over and over again, that's what becomes the game changer. Because mm -hmm. all it takes is a couple big losses doing the same, same mistake over and over again, you know? Right, right. And I think, I think traders might make that mistake where it's where they might be. I tend to be too harsh on myself. Um, but I think some traders maybe are too easy on themselves. So another trader in my situation was like, oh, it's okay. You know, but like you said, Bryce, it only takes a few more trades where it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Where I'd rather be a little too hard on myself and realize this has to stop right here. Um, right. If no, it goes like any further, I'm going to regret it. You know. It's like you can't be blaming the market for your mistakes. And so, I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's acceptably, acceptable to be too hard on yourself because at the end of the day, every loss technically is your mistake. And that's mm -hmm. how you become better is learning from it. Yep. I couldn't agree more. You can't just, you know, chalk it up to, oh, this ticker was a scam because they came out with this news late day and it's just so scammy or whatever, or this was unfair because this happened or whatever. It's just, there was you know, there's always going to be something for, you know, there's going to be a reason always for why your mistake happened. You know what I mean? Or why you lost money or why you did this. So, mm -hmm. you know, really looking inward at what you did versus what the market did. Um, and just seeing how you can adjust and do better for the next time. And like Kyle said, like, just take it easy for the rest of the month. And like, it's back to the basics. It's back to what got us to where we are. And that's what we're, you know, that's what we believe in. That's what we trust. We trust the process of what got us here. And it's very easy for us to 
see that, okay, this isn't what got me here. This is, you know, what gets me big losses. Um, and Kyle also said, like, you know, this reminded me of my MMNFF trade. Um, and yeah, it's just, you're able to recognize like, okay, I've made the same mistakes. So maybe I'm just going to even be more cautious and more cautious uh, moving forward. And good picture or good news for Kyle is, is it's just, you know, not the end of the world, just a crappy mistake. Um, he probably only gave back a day or two worth of gains, but we hold ourselves very accountable and we don't like, you know, drawing back at all. If you look at me and Kyle's profit charts, like we'd rather go sideways than, than down. So um, he's going to bounce back and, you know, we're going to learn to trade in the slow market the best we can. Yeah, I agree. Well said. I agree. Well said. Jack, do you have any charts you want to look at or no? Um, we can talk about, I don't really know. Um, I guess we can talk about my TGGI swing trade that I got into that a lot of people have been asking about. Um, I mean, this trade, I first entered my position at the beginning of February. And that's kind of what I did for um, a lot of names just kind of believing in the January effect and how crazy the market was in all the sectors. So I did end up um, buying this one after I had seen uh, the first pop that it had. And I kind of looked into the company. I just saw that it was re weed related. And um, I was like, okay, it's kind of creating a nice base down there above the previous day of uh, the previous breakout level. Um, so I simply just got along. I think uh, I bought like 10 million shares at, um, trip six so 0 0.006 which was like six thousand dollars i'm okay risking about 50 percent on my swing trades and the idea is to go for um you know multiple hundreds of percent uh winners and then once i started working and breaking out i actually then went and added um in that first that first pop there i, I actually went and added five million more shares because after i've watched it you know for one to two weeks and it really created that base now i'm more comfortable changing my risk to that um, a little bit higher, like that 0 0.005. So therefore, I'd only have $1,000 risk with my 10 million shares from six. Um, so I was comfortable adding a little bit more to, you know, boost my um, risk up. And it ended up having a huge pop after they released some 10k news. And this was, you know, at the end of February. So I was a little bit greedy. Um, and I only sold, I think, like 3 million shares, which wasn't even a third of my position. Um, looking back at it, I probably should have sold like a third or more into that first pop. Um, but fortunate for, fortunately for me, it did the same kind of thing where it came back down and then created support on the previous breakout level. Um, and then I ended up moving my risk to that double bottom area because I didn't want to give back all my profits um, to that one area. And then it went on this uh, sick multi-day run all the way up to a penny. And I ended up scaling out most of my shares into that. I, I sold like 10 million shares between like seven and a penny. Um, and then I held on to 3 million shares just to kind of see if it could, you know, if it could hold up in the, you know, five, six, seven, uh, five, six, seven area, then we could potentially see a penny breakout because that was a perfect uh, psychological number. And I thought that if we, you know, if we could break out, it's proven to be a multi-day runner. So maybe it could go to three, four, five cents and it could be just an absolute incredible winner. Um, I was dreaming a little bit too much because it was like a 1500% gain up there. And uh, once it ended up cracking that support on four, um, then I went ahead and sold the last of my shares. I ended up blocking in like 78,000 on the trade. And that's, you know, 80% of my month right there, uh, maybe 70%. I think I'm up like 115 or something on the month. And, you know, I'm really happy with it and how I went ahead and kept changing my plan and kept trading it the best that I could. Um, maybe it breaks a penny one day. Maybe I'll rejoin it small if it can create a base uh, towards the end of the year or something. And we'll just kind of see. Uh, ticker trades really well. So um, it was a fun one. That's a crazy trade. Yeah. That's patience. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. I didn't know uh, sub pennies can go so low. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like uh, trip, not dub, but like trip six, like zero for three zeros. That's. Uh, it's impressive. Well, it was getting volume like way back in September when it was even under that. That's, I mean, yeah. it got, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Almost a billion shares there. So, I mean, whoever bought a billion shares from, I mean, what is that trip, uh, trip one? Like basically nothing. Mm -hmm. like 3, basically, basically zero. Yeah. 
and <laughs> I mean, it went all the way to a penny. So um, it's definitely, you know, fun to swing trade these, but I don't really recommend it for a lot of um, newer traders. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I can just buy and hold and then it's going to keep going up and it's going to be easy. Um, I really suggest just like day trading because you can get quicker profits and you're not going to have capital tied up. You're not going to be so heavily invested in one stock. Um, so definitely just day trade your way up. But once you have enough capital, that's when I started um, kind of exploring the strategy and I've done pretty well with it so far. I think about, um, you know, 15 to 20% of my overall profits have come from these swing trades in the past four months. And, you know, it's been a few uh, close to, I think I have like four or five close to a hundred thousand dollar winners. And then the rest are some really nice 30, 40, $50,000 winners. And then just, some small losses because I'm not like, I don't really put in a ton of money so I can only lose up to a hundred percent, which is also something that I really like because you can make exponentially more than you put in. Um, you know, that's why I'm okay. Risking 30, 50, 60, like 60 to 70%. Once it's down like 60 or 70%, I'm usually um, cutting in the bounces and selling because it's has broken my plan by then. And I don't know where I really learned it from. I just kind of, um, just saw charts over the time and I realized that I could just kind of buy and hold some of these that have uh, the right, you know, time of the year, the right market, the right um, sector that's in the right market cap and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and not all, don't think all of them play out this well. I'm, um, I definitely have some ones that I've taken some, um, you know, that I'm, I'm, that I'm even holding now that I'm down like 30 to 50% on, but it's not like I've put um, a ton of money into them and, I'm just kind of waiting and seeing and uh, just going to cut my losses as they become crappier and crappier and they don't work. Um, but this one was definitely cool and it makes up for, you know, having a few losses and I'll still be green on my swings overall. Even if your win for stun is crappy, um, that one trade can cover, you know, 10, 20 losses. So, okay. yeah. I think the key is, like you said, the market, the research that you put into it. You're not just slinging it every, yeah. every trip that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the key thing is you said it was a weed, a weed company, or at least a potential weed company, right? Like that's that's a hot sector. At least it was for a few few moments in the first two or yeah. three months of the year. You know, that's that's key. You know, we're not. He's not just buying. You're not just buying any any random, any random. You know, sub penny stock. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to have. Um... Like the ones that I'm only, I do have some that aren't related to anything. And those are the ones I always lose on because um, I just like, oh, this chart's nice. And I buy it and then it, it tanks. So I'm like, why did it tank? Oh, because it has no sector. So definitely that's like number one thing is I can only, I only have conviction on ones that are hot with the either, you know, electric vehicle, like um, had a bunch of good trades on stuff related to Tesla and Tesla was, you know, mooning. There's just so many stocks that related um, in the energy sector and the whole energy sector is really hot. So that was a great sector. Weed sector is great. Bitcoin sector has been great. Um, Kyle's also participated in some crypto swings. So a lot of people ask me a lot of questions on these and, you know, I hope that answer was uh, pretty sufficient and you guys learned something from it. I, I took a dumb trade my, myself on HMBL that looked very similar to ENZC. HMBL. That was, this one is tough too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these, the, uh, the, the, in the daily chart, super similar to, to ENZC too. I mean, it was, it wasn't like a panic at the highs. Um, it wasn't, it was just nothing special, but mm -hmm. it was one of those, I don't know. I got, I saw LTNC, I saw that bounce and I just got some major FOMO and I'm like, well, this one's going to bounce too. And I unfortunately missed missed the bottom and um, filled in the filled in the two eighties and just got chopped around exiting and entering because I was like, all right, this isn't working now. It's working and um, at the time it was going down for that double bottom, I actually got a notification from my broker that my entire account was placed on exiting only, so I could not buy positions anymore. <laughs> um, so I called them up real quick they unlocked my account and then I saw it bouncing. I was like, I'm going to chase it up here. I, well, I didn't think I was going to chase it, but I did chase it. And uh, I ended up selling for break even after it uh, came and dipped back down after kind of barely breaking that 290. Um, and this is just like a total example of where I, 
one, I never, ever trade end of day panics ever. So I don't really know why I decided to do it today. Another one where I didn't look into any news. Um, it was just, it was a FOMO, I, I kind of a revenge trade, but really just FOMO from missing the LTNC panic. And uh, I kind of broke my rule of, if, if I'm not seeing any action that I like in the first hour, it's probably a reason for me not to, not to stick around. But sure enough, I, I had to go on and check the Coinbase IPO. And then, you know, that created a little rabbit hole where I just like, oh, I'll check a couple of tickers here, I'll check a couple and saw HMBL panicking and uh, decided to try it. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think I lost 2,300 on it by the end of the day, which, you know, isn't the end of the world. It's nothing crazy in terms of my profit curve, but there's not really enough opportunity in the market to just go make that back. Um, so for me, what I think I'm going to do going forward is uh, implement like a, an, another max loss on the day for now, just while the market is slow. So that way I, I seem to respect it really well whenever I tell myself, if I'm down this much, just walk away. And I need to do a lot better with sticking to my plan of not coming back after, you know, 10, 30, 11, um, if I'm not seeing anything because then stuff like this happens where there is a panic, but that doesn't mean it's going to bounce. The action just, yeah. in my opinion, as predictable. The patterns aren't as predictable. It's kind of 50, 50. Yeah. I like what you said there about, uh, right. Like that loss isn't that big of a deal. But in this market, it's too big. It's, it's, it's not, a, I guess it is a big deal, you know? Um, Cause I think about it a lot. Like, yeah, like, like back to my situation, my loss isn't that bad, right? My, me down, being down, me being down 5k on the day, again, is not detrimental at all. Like I'm going to, two weeks from now, I'm going to forget I even had this day. Um, but the loss I had to take to take me from, you know, up 10 to then down five, like, I, this isn't the kind of market I can afford that kind of a loss, you know, most markets not like, yeah, in this last market we could, cause it was the most insane thing we've ever seen. Um, but now that we're slower, it's like today would have been a great day and a great slower market that we've been struggling with. So to give that all back, uh, I think that's what sucks is that it's just not the right environment to do it. And I did it anyway. Um, but yeah, so you nailed it on the head there. I like that a lot. Yeah, no, exactly. It's just, not worth the stress, not worth the time. Mm -hmm. Because yep. we just need to be fresh for when the next hot market goes and just kind of stay consistent and not stay emotional. Um, I'm sure you guys have some other projects that you want to um, do in life, like Kyle just traveled and Bryce has his job. So it's just kind of about um, focusing on that for now and kind of just trying to stay away from the market so we are ready to go when it turns back on and just focusing on consistency because at the end of the day uh, it doesn't really matter how much money we make right now because we'll be able to make substantially more when it's hot and that's when it, it matters more if we're on our a game and we're you know sizing and doing all this i think for right now it's really more focused on consistency and um you know that cleaner mental state just so it's it's easier to get by uh this time like for me i know that um, I've really detached from like, oh, I've made this much money and I have this much capital, so I should be making this. Like, it's it's not about that at all right now. It's, it's just about um, trying to stay consistent and trying to be very protective because, you know, I don't want to go through these emotional rides. We've just been on an absolute um, heater these past few months. And like, uh, I just think we need to get like all the degen this out of us and just really just focus on consistency and protecting. Like, we almost have like, trading like we almost have a small account again you know what i mean um so i think bryce's uh max loss idea is a great idea and i think a lot of people should implement that that are kind of struggling right now yeah and i i think these are the markets right now this slower time who knows how long it could last for but these are the ones that kind of define people who are like you said the dgens and the people who are going to truly be consistent because like let's be honest hot markets teach you bad habits um which if you know how to come back from them and use these slower markets as a way to like, you know, restate the good habits and get ready for the next hot market, you're going to be all right. But that's really more of just the surviving rather than thriving mentality right now. Um, and for traders who are able to survive long enough to make it to the next hot market, those are the ones that generally are consistent traders. Yeah, I like it. All right, big dog, Kyle, close her out. Let's close her out here. 
All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, hopefully you learned. I think there's a lot of good nuggets from this episode, particularly from, from my lessons and really all our lessons in this market. Um, so be sure to subscribe and like this video, comment what you guys want to see maybe in potential videos. Um, and we will see you guys next time. And if Peace. you want me to replace Matt Monaco full-time, let me know. Mm, yeah, there we go. Let us know. Bye, <laughs> right, guys.